Oh, this has been a long time coming, mate. Mm. Long time. Yeah, I could probably uh, move that a bit. There you go. So, Vic 20, you bought a Vic 20, did you, well, as much as I hate to say it, because cartridge games were well overpriced, except the ones from Commodore, which were, I think, 15 quid, maybe less, actually. But like international soccer was uh, fourteen ninety nine on cartridge, so I can't imagine Vic Twenty uh, games being any less than that, or any more. It's probably a standard thing. They use twice as much plastic. Oh boy, Vic Twenty cartridges are awesome, mate, because they're like the uh, Neo Geo cartridges of uh, nineteen eighty one. They're massive. They're like three times the size of uh, VCS or C64 cartridges. They're great actually. Now, it took me a long time to work this out. And uh, it was actually by accident, and I haven't tried all the ROMs. I tried one uh, cartridge ROM that is a single you know, file, CRT file, and uh, that worked. And then I tried the same trick with pole position, which loads into uh, 6000, that's hexadecimal, and uh, A000, and that worked. I didn't test any cartridges that might load into uh, 2000. So. I've also set it up with uh, 16k RAM because that's a weird thing you have to tell the T64 uh, that it's a 16k machine even though cartridges did not need extra memory the memory is on the cartridge so I'm not sure why that is so that's like a bit of a clutch. I'm pretty sure you don't have to do that in Vice All the uh, author of uh, Car Ted, Car Technical Demo, Car Race Engine Technical Demo for the Plus Four, he got back to me, thankfully, and uh, he said uh, Vice doesn't run it. He goes, "You're correct." He goes Vice for the Plus Four is not a very good emulator. But I did say to him, "I tried version 3.2 and it still crashed." I prefer 2.4 because I've got that set up nicely, and uh, well. Vice will never sound as good as a real C64 on some tunes anyway, whatever you do. So I'm quite happy with 2.4 with a real CD emulation. That's good enough for me. If you really want to hear Spellbound or Light Force, you have to run it on a real C64. And even then, it's not the whole song. It's only like a 20, 30 second bit. So... I'd love to have more Vic 20 cartridges. There's probably only 30 cartridges old one. But I've only got about six of those that I want. I've got others, but I don't really like them. Um, and now is not really the time. Ten years ago wasn't really the time to start collecting cartridge games for the C64. And probably the Vic 20 as well. The boxes don't survive well because they're cardboard boxes, that's another thing. Yeah, I'm still smoking in it, see, look. <laughs> Hold your horses, mate. And that Fiesta gone, they've just been sitting in that car for fucking. Or is there no one in that car now? Yeah, it's a uh, spastic hour. Oh, I looked this up on Google and apparently it's true. 
the IQ of humans has been dropping for the last three decades, which coincidentally is around the time of, uh, you know, when the internet was a thing, even though the internet existed well before that. CompuNet is the internet. You could download files, you could download music, you could download video demos, you could download, like, maybe game demos. I'm not sure about that, but they should have put game demos on there. But... Uh, it's very expensive because you had to pay, you know, X amount of pence per minute and subscribe to CompuNet and buy the modem, which I think was 80 or 100 pounds. It wasn't cheap. At that point, buying one now, well, something's happened here. Oh, great, it's got auto thingy and I ain't finished me rolled up. So generally, the cartridge games are the best version of that genre on the Big 20. It's not always the case, but generally it is. I don't think there's a better racing game than this, technically, uh, on the Big 20. Uh, Enduro wasn't converted to the Big 20. I don't think Activision did anything. This is no worse than the BBC Micro version of Pole Position, I have to say. There may be better racing games on the uh, BBC, however... You can't play pole position uh, on the BBC Micro with a proper joystick because the Competition Pro for the BBC Micro didn't come out until much later. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite generous on the collision detection. Mm -hmm. So it's more playable than grid start on the Amiga. And then let's face it, a Big 20 with a tape deck was half the price of a BBC Micro. The colour palette is pretty much the same. It looks different to the VCS version, but the VCS version was a really nice conversion, technically. It probably could have done better on the, uh, you know, on the old Vic 20, but uh, there you go, mate. This is Gerhard Berger style uh, quality of Formula One driving, but I am smoking. Don't remember Ayrton Senna with a fag in his mouth as he's uh, putting his uh, qualifying lapping stroke lap record, yeah. New season, Ayrton Senna qualifies as a new lap record. It was a thing. You don't get that now, and if you do, it's bullshit. Formula One now is bullshit. I'm burning my finger on a bloody roll up there. Is it as good as the uh, Atari 400 version? No, no it isn't. If you try writing uh, programs on the Atari 400 keyboard, you know, the only rival to the VIC-20 had to have a, a full keyboard because that was the thing. That's not bad. That was pole position. No, I didn't want that. Here we go. Uh, I put Pac-Man on here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to play golf because I don't even think I have uh, golf. Not the real cartridge, so you have to do the auto load business. 
don't know if you have to reset. Uh, here we go. I have to move the screen again. It's not letting me move the screen. Usually you can move the screen. So let's move the camera a little bit there. There we go. Camera might fall off. Great sound effects, mate. The sound effects on this are better than the uh, C64 version. Now I had this on the Coleco vision and uh, I did play the arcade game sometimes. This is not how you're supposed to do this level, by the way. Uh, your ship is so large, it's artificially difficult. You have to pick them off just like Space Invaders. There's no Galaxian level on any official conversion, so there's that. Why have I still got three lives? How many lives do you start with? Oh! Now I've got two lives. Very small, so that is very cool. E oh, come on, mate. Oh, space wall. It's not bad actually for the Vic 20. Now, I know Commodore cartridges were 15 quid, but I'm guessing Atari cartridges were 30 quid uh, on the uh, VIC-20, because they were 30 quid on the VCS, so why would they be uh, cheaper? Ah, well. Let's try something else. Let's, uh, let's check out potentially £30 Pac-Man and compare it to uh, Commodore's 15 pound jelly monsters let's do that then eh? oh, I'll press F1 bit of a delay there well the cherries look nice that way I've got work to do mate such a small screen though Oh uh, no, they don't do the thing on the VCS where, um, you know, they don't respawn until, like, all of them have uh, stopped flashing blue. I don't actually want to go that way. It always sends me that way. So it's actually better to avoid them. That's the C64 joystick, that is. didn't even want to go in there. Oh no, he's going to get me again. So I'm losing lives because A, my controller input isn't brilliant, but B, the C64 joystick is not brilliant either. So we're doing it this way, mate. trouble here aren't we yeah I actually pushed up no sorry mate I pushed up that's unfair that is so you have to get up there now which is, I can't make that turn there and he always gets me there Ooh. and even if he doesn't he's a bit fucked there so I had to wait to see where he was going anyway It always does it. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, we have to get to the power pitch. I want to do at least the level. Oh, that was risky, that was. There we go, we've got the these now. Should 
be able to do it right, here we go. So I've done a level at least. I didn't see any of the fruit actually. It's very difficult to make that turn. So it's more authentic to the arcade than um, the VCS conversion, so there's that. that on purpose that ah, see on the VCS that doesn't happen they don't come out until uh, you know which is not like the arcade but I don't like the arcade anyway so okay hopefully Jelly Monsters will work check to make sure the camera was lined up there right, the jelly monsters is here right okay there's only one of those so should just overwrite that cartridge image uh, address a000 actually centered up sort of and we have it up a bit yes. right mm, weird. I couldn't get this to work on my real big thing with the joystick it won't work for some reason So close. How about you? So the screen is much bigger for a start, so it's more like the arcade because you've got a similar amount of dots to actually collect. So you can play it more like the arcade and it's half the price of the official conversion. So I've got no problem with piracy here. Tell you that for nothing, mate. Ah, that was just pure luck, that was. Let's get down here. See you later, bruv. See, I shouldn't have done that, actually. So you need to get out there somewhere. There we go. So using my arcade tactics, uh, I can actually do a level on my first go. So that's right then. So yeah, there you go, that's interesting. Right? This, if you like Pac-Man, this was really good on the Big 20. Uh, I don't know how long they are allowed to sell it for. Because in 1983 there was a bit of a, an argument between Commodore and Atari in the courts over this kind of thing. So uh, the initial ruling by the judge was actually to say, I'm not sure basically in legal terms. Level 2 is going to be a real sod now. I wonder why he didn't chase me. Don't know how we're going to get up there quick enough. Oh, no, 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 no. Not with these controls, mate. Nah. Oh, that was lucky. They keep chasing me. They won't go away. God damn it. Now, oh, man, it's, it's difficult to get up there. Yeah, that's pretty good, that is. Very impressed, actually. And for half the price, you can't go wrong. Uh, I think it's in the video I did about when exactly did the C64 come out. The same issue of Popular Computing Weekly. 
uh, you don't actually talk about that. So let's check out Galaxian. So luckily, I did manage to fluke getting these to work. So. So this is kind of what you expect the Laxine on the Big 20 to look like. Only because your standards are low and you don't really understand you know, the technical abilities of these machines. Now back when I was a little kid I wouldn't have understood what was possible but I only had a Big 20 for about 3 months so and if I did have a cartridge it was only one. So I bought a home computer because VCS games were just too expensive. You ended up with such a small library of games you got bought. There we go, so it did a level, so. So it's a bit like a mediocre CRT TV. Right? You see this and you think, ah, that's all right, nothing wrong with that. It's not until you put it side by side with a uh, Panasonic Quintrix or Sony Trinitron that you're going to notice, or even a Grundy actually. Uh, and it turns out my Triumph TV that I had with my Big 20 was actually a Grundy, rebadged really as a Triumph to sell in the UK. Without import tax, no doubt. So if you had this as an unexpanded game on tape for like, you know, six, seven quid, that'd be great. Now luckily for skin flints like me, we were getting like two quid pocket money a week if I were up in those two. See, because I was the youngest in the family, my pocket money was artificially higher. There was an inflation uh, aspect to it. <laughs> I'd argue, you know, five years ago, you know, sweets and uh, comics were cheaper. So I do need more pocket money than uh, my sibling had at that age. Ooh. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. And now for the Panasonic Quintrix version. And if it doesn't work, we're a bit fucked. Uh, it's only a single, uh, so it's only an 8K image, I guess. Can we move the screen? Yeah, luckily we can. I did check for uh, Arcadia by Imagine on cartridge, but uh, yeah, there isn't one. And uh, you can't do this move the screen business. So of course, uh, you know, the C I think it was the CEO of Nintendo used to work uh, for How Laboratories, which was uh, a company that Commodore Japan dealt with, really. I don't think they're the same thing. Anyway. So obviously this is exactly like the arcade, sounds like the arcade. Looks like the arcade. If you stretch the screen, it really would. Uh, considering the Vic 20's resolution and the lack of bitmap mode or sprites or anything, this is bloody good. So this is better than Astro Wars straight away, so there you go. You couldn't have uh, a tabletop VFD uh, electronic game with this size of screen, so that's always a problem. So. I wouldn't have had sound like that, all that was lucky. So again, this is half the price of uh, Galaxian by Atari Soft, no doubt. And uh, it's twice as good. I think we have a winner there.
So I've done a level it's magic, but it is more difficult than the uh, Galaxian. Only because it's more faithful to the arcade. And it's probably more difficult than the arcade because the screen height isn't 288 pixels. It's probably not even half that. Yeah, maybe they should have uh, not bothered with the score, but it's an amazing bit of coding. E I might spray my the C64, I might spray it white because uh, I'd rarely use it to play C64 games but uh, I can play cartridge games on the Big 20 the Big 20 mode I was going to say uh, using this thing and because uh, I'm not going to buy those cartridges. I refuse to buy overpriced loose cartridges and I can't afford to buy insanely overpriced you know boxed in uh, you know good condition. They don't have to be sealed or mint or anything but that's a problem with dark chambers on the 7800. Had to sell it for the old mortgage payments isn't it? There's nothing I could do about that. And uh, I just never got round to buying all this stuff back again. So, let's see if there's any other... Um... Right, let's check out Frogger. Now, Menagerie by Commodore uh, is sort of like Frogger, so we go with that. Yeah. So first we'll try Frogger by Parker. Go, that's uh, lined up enough. F1 to start. Why did they waste so much of the screen for like round one time? All that bullshit. This is not good. It was better than any uh, Frogger clone that I tried from the uh, tape, you know, unexpanded or whatever crap. To be honest, this is why I expect uh, a typing listing <coughs> of Frogger to be like on the Vic. It's not really great. Now, how laboratories did not do um, they did not do menagerie as far as I remember. Just wait here. What happened there? Then? Where am I? I'm still on there. Oh crap! I couldn't see where I was. Ah no. Ooh. wait here then it's done something because I'm still oh, I'll wrap around the screen that's wrong actually you should lose your life if that happens that's the hardest one to do especially with uh, you know, crap controls Now there is Frogger 07, let's see. I thought I got that one before anyway. Ooh, no, that's not the time to go. Ah, bugger off with you, mate. E. I think I'm losing interest in the game. I think that's the problem there. Yeah.
What happened there? No, nothing happened there. Do they go down in the water? Does it get more difficult within the actual level I'm on? Like the round? Uh, I don't like these blue cars. They're annoying actually. What's wrong with that? Right, that's enough of that. Wouldn't have been happy with that for 30 quid. Oof. Wouldn't have been happy with Frog. I wouldn't have bought a Frogger game for like 30 quid anyway. I don't like Frogger that much. 